Hello again everybody and welcome back. This is the eighth video in the Atmel microcontroller programming series and before we continue on to this video's topic let's take a quick look at some of the previous videos we've done. Of course in the first three videos those were kind of beginning topics. The first video we uh, got a lead blinking so that was digital output. In the second video we uh, changed our clock speed and in the third video to sort of round out the beginner topics we took a look at digital input. So as we've moved into the intermediate topics we've taken a look at uh, analog inputs, uh, interrupts, timers and counters, and pulse width modulation. So uh, what we're going to do today essentially is going to combine those uh, previous intermediate topics. So GitHub, uh, micro MI, CRO, CO, microcontrollers, and more. Take the spaces out. And let's go ahead and start with the circuits we're going to use today. There's going to be two of them. Actually, you can just breadboard the second one because that includes the parts from the first one, but we'll, we'll take a look at the diagrams individually here. So raw, uh, save target as, and save it to the desktop. We'll overwrite that old copy. Okay, there we go. Download has completed. And then we're also going to save two analogs into PWMs out circuit.png. And then we're going to go ahead and choose save target as and save that to the desktop. And download has completed, so now let's take a look at those. So here's the first circuit we're going to do today. And uh, this is largely similar to the circuits we've done so far. The power supply is the same, and the power and ground for the chips is, uh, chip is the same, and the uh, breadboard programming connector is the same. Uh, there's only uh, two pins you're going to have to set up that uh, were different than the previous videos. One is we're going to put a 10k ohm potentiometer on pin 27, uh, and that's going to be for input, and then we're going to put a LED on pin 12, and that's going to be for output. So what's going to happen is as we turn this uh, potentiometer here up and down, we'll of course read in the uh, value into the 18 mega 328p's analog to digital converter, and then we're going to pulse width modulate uh, this LED with variable brightness depending on how the potentiometer is turned. So uh, we're performing analog to digital conversion and pulse width modulation at the same time. And then in the second example, to give you an idea of how you can multitask even more, um, we're going to add a second potentiometer onto pin 28, 10k ohm as well, and then we're going to add a second uh, LED onto pin 5 or PD3, and um, that's also going to be a 470 ohm limiting resistor, as is the LED on pin 12. So what we're going to end up with is when we turn this upper potentiometer, that's going to change the brightness of the LED on pin 5 via pulse width modulation, and then when we turn this lower potentiometer, that's going to change this LED based on pulse width, pulse width modulations. M more simple circuit from the first um, from the first program, the analog uh, in PWM out circuit that was on pins um, 12 and 27. So you can just breadboard this circuit first to save yourself some time since it also includes the first circuit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and breadboard the circuit and get the picture in picture going. Okay so now we have our circuit breadboarded and we're ready to fire up Atmel Studio. And then we're going to go back here and we're going to choose analog in PWM out.c and then we're going to choose raw and I'll swing that over to the other screen to copy and paste out of then we're going to X out of here and go to file new project and we'll paste in the project name and choose OK and then we're going to choose 328p as our chip of course and then OK whoops OK and double click on that and once the project comes up for us we'll go ahead and rename main.c so let's do that first rename and then we'll copy and paste in the code after turning off code folding there we go and let's go ahead and run the program first as a proof of concept. So control F5, it's going to tell us to pick a programmer, of course. Yes, we know. ML ICE, ISP, control F5 again. And if we, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here so you can see the potentiometer being turned. Maybe if I reach from the other side, that'll work better. So again, the top one isn't, isn't operative yet. That's really just for the second program, but if the lower one, if we turn it all the way up, the LED's now full bright. If we turn it about halfway or a little less, the LED's half bright. Uh, again, that's simply because our eyes don't have a linear response necessarily to brightness, but uh, you get the idea, as you can see here, if we turn it up, turn it back down, and that's working pretty well for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So I'm going to shoot through this pretty quickly because this is really just, uh, let's see, we have to open io.h to get rid of that red underline. Uh, this is really pretty much just a combination of some of the previous programs from the previous tutorials here. So uh, this is pretty much the same as it's been. And then here we're setting the data direction register for 
uh, port D, uh, pin PD6, and then we're going to jump into analog to digital converter configuration. So there's the uh, AD MUX register. We're going to use uh, AVCC for a reference voltage. We're going to left justify the result and just use the 8 bits in ADCH. And then we're using currently in this uh, example only pin 27 for analog to digital converter input. That's going to change in the next program, but we'll get to that uh, at that time. And then we're going to set ADC SRA and ADC SRB, and we're going to enable the analog digital converter, of course, and we're going to enable uh, the auto trigger, also known as free running mode uh, in this example, as well as the ADC interrupt. And we're going to use the 125 kilohertz clock, just the same as we did in the analog to digital converter examples. And for ADC SRB, we can set this all to zeros. And then we're going to move on to the pulse width modulation. So actually, why don't we take a look at the pinout for the ATmega328P. So if we go back to the first tutorial, and ATmega328P pinout, and then raw, and then open. So uh, in this uh, first program, what we're doing is we have our LED on pin 12, which is PD6, and also OC0A. So we're configuring the pulse width modulation uh, for OC0A with these next few registers here. And there's only two registers we have to set, I believe, TCCR0A and TCCR0B. Yep, that's it. So TCCR0A, we're going to set this COM0A1 um, and COM0A0 bits so that when timer counter 0 rolls over, we're going to set uh, or I should say the hardware internal to the ATmega328P is going to set OC0A to high and then when timer uh, counter 0 equals OCR0A then we're going to set OC0A to low and then we're going to choose fast PWM mode with the wave generation mode bits and there's one more in TCCR0B here and to make the PWM fast we're going to choose no prescaling and at that point it's just a matter of enabling interrupts and starting the analog to digital converter jumping into our endless while loop and each time an analog to digital conversion completes we're going to get into this ISR here ADC vect at which time we're going to uh, take the ADC high result and we're going to assign that to OCR 0A and uh, recall that we don't need an additional routine here to complete the pulse width modulation because of how we've configured uh, TCC R0A and TCC R0B. The, um, as long as we are able to use one of these pins here, OC0AB, OC1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, which we are in this case here, we're using OC0A pin 12, um, we don't need that additional routine because the hardware will take care of it for us with how we've configured TCC R0A and TCC R0B. If you did not have one of these six pins available, then you would have to have an additional interrupt here. You would have to have a timer that would uh, cycle, and then you could use each time the timer um, was to roll over or reach a compare value, you could toggle the LED and achieve pulse width modulation that way. But fortunately, in this case, the OC0A pin was available to us. So uh, that program was successful. Let's go ahead and exit out of Atmel, and then we will, Atmel Studio that is, and then we'll fire up uh, Atmel Studio again and get the second program going. So we're going to go back here, and then we're going to go to, uh, let's see, two analogs in, two PWMs out.c, and then raw, and I'll slide that over the other screen to copy and paste out of. And whoops, there we go. Okay, file, new, project. And we'll paste that in. And the only uh, real challenge here, once this comes up, we'll rename main.c, so 328p. And the only real challenge here is that there's only one analog to digital converter inside the ATmega328P. So to read the two potentiometers, what we're going to have to do is we're going to read um, one of them and for one cycle, and then we'll read the next one for the other cycle, and then we have to keep flip-flopping back and forth. But we're going to find that we'll be able to do that fast enough that there isn't a perceptible delay. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the code in. And this is the code here that actually does that jumping back and forth between pin 27 and pin 28 as far as where the ADC is reading, but we'll get to that at the end. First, let's go ahead and run the program as a proof of concept. And it's going to tell us to pick a programmer, of course. Yes, we know that. Atmel ICE, ISP, Control F5 again. And now both LEDs should respond to the potentiometer. So there's the top one responding, and there's the lower one responding. And again, the chip's able to jump back and forth between reading pin 27 and pin 28 fast enough that we can use both of these, of course, and there's no perceptible delay at all as we uh, change these back and forth. So we've got that working for us. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the code. Uh, so this top part here is pretty much the... Okay, got to open 
IO.h to get rid of those red underlines there. Okay, control M, control P to turn off code folding, and we didn't rename main.c in this program, but it really doesn't matter. We could rename it now, it makes no difference. Uh, rename, there we go, okay. So uh, this is pretty much the same as the previous programs, and then here we're setting uh, PD3 and PD6 for output. So if we take a quick look at the pinout, as we already saw, um, PD6 is all the same pin as OC0A, that's pin 12. And then uh, pin 5, which is PD3, is also the same pin as OC2B. So this is the other hardware pulse width modulation facility we'll be taking advantage of out of this list of six uh, available options. So once we've set those two to be output, now it's a matter of setting our registers. So the ADMUX, um, this is going to be similar to the previous program. Use AVCC for reference voltage, left justify the results. We're just going to take the high 8 bits of the result in ADCH, and bit 4 is always 0. And we're going to start out with the analog to digital converter looking at um, PC4 or ADC4, which is pin 27, those are all the same there, so if we look towards the top right of the chip here, PC4, ADC4, and pin 27 is all the same, and we're going to have to flip back and forth between looking at that and pin PC5 or ADC5, which is pin 28, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. So uh, there's ADMUX, and then we're going to set ADC SRA, so of course we're going to enable the analog to digital converter, and we're going to uh, not use the auto trigger this time, in other words, we're now going to use single conversion mode, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, of course, we do have to enable the analog to digital converter interrupt, and we're going to use our same clock setting. And then for ADC SRB, we can set this all to zeros. So now we're going to jump down to TCC R0A and TCC R0B, and those are the two registers we configured in the last program to get OC0A working for us. And those are the same settings, so no need to go over those. And now the next two registers we're going to configure are TCC R2A and TCC R2B, and those are going to get OC2B, which is pin 5 working for us. So uh, the settings are very uh, slightly different, or I should say only slightly different, than the TCC R0A and TCC R0B settings, so these should look pretty familiar here. So TCC R2A, we're, um, of course, because we're using we're using OC2B, not OC2A. So here we're going to use the COM uh, B bits rather than the COM A bits, but it's the same idea as with the previous two registers. And we're going to configure the wave generation mode bits for fast PWM, and there's also one down here as well. And once again, we're going to use no prescaling to achieve a relatively fast PWM. And then at this point, all that's left in main here is to enable interrupts and start the first analog to digital conversion and then jump into our infinite while loop. And here the ISR for the uh, analog to digital converter completing is a little bit more interesting. So what we're going to do here is we have to first check are we looking at pin 27 or 28. And then for example if we're looking at, uh, let's say we're looking at pin 27, then we have to get the result and update the uh, pin 12 LED for that. But then we have to then flip the eight analog to digital converter to looking at pin 28 so the next time around it gets the other result. So that's what we're doing with this if statement here. So here we're looking if the analog to digital converter is on pin 27. If it is, we're going to take the analog to digital converter high value, assign it to the OCR0A uh, register, and then we're going to change ADMUX to looking at pin 28 for the next time through. Um, otherwise, if we were already uh, looking at pin 28 to begin with, then we're going to assign the analog to digital converter high result to OCR2B, and then we're going to change ADMUX to looking at pin 27 for the next time through. And ideally we should never get to this part of the else statement due to minor timing occurrences we might get here occasionally, but it's very rare and really doesn't hurt the, doesn't hurt the program operation at all as you saw when we tried it out. And then of course because we're in single conversion mode we need to uh, start the analog to digital converter again for the next conversion. And then the next time we go through the ISR we'll simply run the same uh, process again and we'll be all set going back and forth between pin 27 and 28. So uh, that completes this tutorial. I uh, hope everybody found this beneficial as a first multitasking example. And in the next video we're going to take a look at switch debouncing. So I'll see everybody in the next one.